Copilot experiences can be confusing. What Copilot do I have access to? When should I use it? And what exactly does it offer me? These are questions many people are asking today as they try to make sense of the growing number of AI tools available across both personal and work environments. So in today's video, I want to help you cut through the noise. We're going to navigate through the key similarities and differences between Microsoft 365 Copilot and Microsoft Copilot experiences, specifically for enterprise customers and personal commercial users. Whether you're trying to optimize your workflow at the office or wondering what Copilot can do for you at home, this breakdown will give you the clarity you need to make the most out of your AI companion. Hey everyone, my name is Nick Harris and I am a Senior Copilot Cloud Solution Architect with Microsoft. Welcome to the Microsoft 365 Copilot Connection, where we provide you all of the latest updates, functionalities, and experience changes impacting your Microsoft 365 Copilot experience. Understanding the current Microsoft Copilot experiences that are available to you today is a challenge. And so in today's video, I want to talk to those similarities and differences and all of the material available based on the type of experience that you specifically use. So let's start off with the enterprise experience, the Microsoft 365 Copilot Companion that's directly available to you for you to leverage within your work. There are two flavors of this companion. You have the option available to you for free and the licensed version of Copilot. And there are some distinct ways to tell if you have a license or not. Specifically shown on my screen here, I can tell in this experience, I do not have a Copilot license. And the reason why I can tell this is because there are no toggle switches at the very top of my Copilot chat screen. If a license was available to me, I would have direct access to all of the rich work data around me that Copilot has access to. My files, my emails, my team's chats and meetings. All of that rich information that makes up the work that I perform and the work that my peers and my leadership and all the people around me in my organization are directly collaborating on or communicating with. And that's something very important to note distinction-wise between the licensed and the unlicensed versions. The simple fact that if you do not have a license, you do not have access to that work data. And what that means is then Copilot provides you access to data that's on the public-facing web or data that the AI is trained on. You can also upload your own files to this experience. You can summarize files and work through that work content that is directly in your OneDrive, but you don't have access to all of the other rich data sets around you that we previously mentioned. Automatically within Copilot Chat, you have Enterprise Data Security Applied. And what that means is all of that rich data around you that you work with is centrally stored inside of Microsoft 365. So for those of you that are unlicensed, all of your files stay in your OneDrive. All of your prompts are centrally stored in your Microsoft 365 tenant. This is the safest and most secure solution available for work AI experiences today. So let's show some examples of leveraging Copilot chat in the unlicensed version. In this case, I'll very simply prompt, Provide me a briefing on updates in the AI industry. Copilot Chat has responded, and I have direct citations from web sources that Copilot Chat has pulled from. I can validate those sources and ensure they are accurate to my needs and move on in my process. But none of that source data is from my work environment because I do not have access to it. Now, say, for example, I want to inject a file into this chat experience. I have the ability to do so with the add content button. I can click on that option and either upload a file directly from my local device. If I do so, that file will then be centrally stored in my personal OneDrive in my work. Or I can directly reference content from my OneDrive experience and pull that data into Copilot Chat. In this case, I'm going to attach a cloud file. And here I have this Word file centrally stored in my OneDrive experience. I'll select this file and I'll add it directly into chat. 
And in this case, we'll very simply prompt, compare how the data in this document aligns to the latest industry briefing that we had previously outlined. And we have our comparison with that work data from our OneDrive experience. One brief update to note on this experience impacting unlicensed users will be around the middle to end of August, we will be injecting Copilot chat experiences into your productivity apps. That would include Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and OneNote, and you'll have the ability to access Copilot chat without a license integrated in those app experiences. This is a huge win for all of you. However, it does also create a bit of confusion. Consider that the work license has been the only experience that provides you Copilot chat in those apps, and now we're making it available for free. So always remember that with Copilot chat in the unlicensed version, you don't have access to all of that other rich work data. Now moving on to the licensed version of Microsoft 365 Copilot, you'll notice that this Copilot chat experience is very similar. However, there are some distinct differences that you can see looking around the screen. The most distinct difference is the toggle switch at the very top of this chat, work and web toggles. Work allows me to talk to Copilot about all of that rich work data that is around me, while the web toggle is the exact same experience as the unlicensed Copilot chat experience. And the ability to access all of that rich work data around you with an AI assistant is invaluable. You have a ton of data in your email, in your meetings, in your files, and the need to aggregate that into a briefing or a report or new brainstormed ideas that you can leverage with your customers or your peers based on your work is amazing. So as just a brief example, provide me a daily briefing based on my work data, and let's see what Copilot Chat gives us. And now we have our response. Now, Copilot has learned a little bit about who I am with one of our latest updates, Copilot Memory. If you haven't checked out Copilot Memory, this is available across both licensed and unlicensed user experiences. You can check out the card at the top of this video. And as we navigate through this data, we can see that Copilot has personalized a daily briefing based on my projects or communications and chat-based activities and meetings and files all around me so I don't have to directly navigate to those application experiences and manually sift through that content, Copilot serves it up to me on a silver platter. And I can see every particular piece of content and where it's pulled from. Everything is cited. So we have direct access and we can use this chat experience as a starting point to navigate directly to that data if we so choose, of course. So opening up the citations here at the bottom, you can see all of my co-pilot pages, all of my emails, my documents. This can also pull in web sources. General note for those of you that have a license, if you want to pull in web data or toggle that experience on and off, you can navigate to the ellipses in the top right hand corner and click on the web search toggle. Another advantage that the licensed version gives you is direct integrations within the variety of Microsoft 365 app experiences that you have available. Teams, Outlook, Word, PowerPoint, so on and so forth. And you can do more within these areas. I can draft documents. I can rewrite text. I can get coaching advice and document summaries that are more detailed and informational as compared to the unlicensed version. Some of these lines, of course, are being blurred with the previous update that I mentioned that is happening mid-August, where you'll be able to directly leverage Copilot chat for unlicensed users in some of these apps. But the licensing gives you even more. As you see here at the top of my document, I can start a first draft of a file. I'll just draft a request for a proposal for a fictitious client for an RFP here, and we'll click on the generate button and Copilot will draft this document automatically in my Word file. The unlicensed version cannot do this.
And there we have it. After about 20 seconds, I have almost a 1,000 word file, about five pages worth of content that I can then review and make modifications on with additional integrated Copilot licensed capabilities. Now, the final experience to talk to is Microsoft Copilot, not Microsoft 365 Copilot. This particular Copilot experience is built for commercial users. Those of you that do not have direct access to some form of work account, such as within a Microsoft 365 tenant. And this is leveraged for purely personal use. You would sign in with some form of Microsoft account, like an Outlook account as example, and leverage Microsoft Copilot for any of your personal needs. This is also the experience available for a variety of personal Microsoft subscriptions, like a family account, and you can pay an additional cost to get Copilot Pro, which would then directly integrate Copilot, just like you saw with the enterprise-based subscriptions, in your own personal account subscription as well. You can also see there are some clear differences in the user interface experience. It does not look like the work enterprise experience. A brief note about the personal experience, I have noticed it learns a little bit more about me inherently, and you do have the ability to toggle the type of work that you want to do with it. You can get a quick response or have it think more deeply or perform deep research or even leverage now GPT-5 directly built in as well. But one very important note for those of you leveraging any Copilot experience, if you are using Copilot for work, always ensure you are using Microsoft 365 Copilot, whether you are licensed or not. It is the only Copilot experience built for enterprise work because of that enterprise data protection. If you're using Microsoft Copilot as shown here or other solutions like ChatGPT or Google Gemini, those are not directly built for enterprise work. You don't have any control of data that is aggregated through those experiences. So always ensure if you're leveraging it for work, you have that enterprise grade data protection in place. So as example, normally what I would do with Microsoft Copilot, I would leverage this for home improvement plans or budgeting concerns or uh, creating some form of meal list that I may want to make or getting recipes out of it as well. All the type of personal work that I would perform. And so I've indicated it's a personal chef, it's creating a new recipe, and I wanted to give me a recipe for a flour-based crust and a tomato-based sauce, and I want that to be in a step-by-step -step list format. We then have our overall response. We can see all of the information it's directly provided, and again, we can try this out and bake it and see what it tastes like. Or we can also use this particular AI assistant to search the public web, because it also does have access to that web data. As an example of this, provide the latest top five trending pizza recipes online, and we can directly get a list of pizza recipes that it has recommended for us, and we can then go and directly navigate into those web articles. So in short, there are many different co-pilot experiences available to you today. And while this can be confusing, there are some clear distinctions in either the user interface or the capabilities that you have available to you. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. Your support is always appreciated. Let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section below. Subscribe for the latest updates that we release on Microsoft 365 Copilot and share with your colleagues and friends so they don't always have to be confused as well about which experience to use. That's it from me for today, everyone. I greatly appreciate your support as always. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, everybody.